we're done finding nth terms and means of arithmetic and geometric sequences. Let us now put these skills to good use and try to solve problems involving sequences. Let us revisit the steps in solving word problems. Number one, read and analyze the problem. Number two, since we are solving problems involving sequences, if possible, we are going to form a sequence. If not, let us just list down the given data. Number three, identify what the problem requires and solve. Let us go to our first example. Suppose the auditorium of the Tagaytay International Convention Center has 20 seats in the first row and that each row has two more seats than the previous row. If there are 30 rows in the auditorium, how many seats are in the last row? Let us try to form a sequence from the given problem. It is said from the problem that there are 20 seats in the first row. So the first term could be 20. Also, it is said from the problem that each row has two more seats than the previous row. So the second row or the second term could be 22. The third row or the third term could be 24. And so on, following the pattern plus 2. If there are 30 rows in the auditorium, how many seats are in the last row? So if there are 30 rows in the auditorium, it implies that the last row is row 30, which could be our last term. So we are solving for A sub 30. And since we have already identified that the pattern is plus 2. The sequence is arithmetic. Let us now uh, solve for a sub 30 using the formula for finding the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus the quantity of n minus 1 times d. And solve for a sub 30. So a sub 30 now is equal to the first term 20 plus the quantity of n is 30 minus 1 times the common difference 2. So we have now 20 plus 30 minus 1 is 29 times 2. So we have 20 plus 29 times 2. That's going to be 58 plus 20, and we have our final answer, a sub 30 is equal to 78. Therefore, there are 78 seats in the last row. Let's have our second example. Given the data in example 1, how many seats are there in TICC? This is a concept that is new to us. We are unfamiliar to this concept because this problem has something to do with series. So let us define what a series is. So a series is the indicated sum of the terms of a sequence. The formula for the sum of the first n terms in an arithmetic sequence is the formula below. So we have s sub n is equal to n times the quantity of 2a sub 1 plus the quantity of n minus 1 times d all over 2. We have identified this formula because in example number 1, the sequence is an arithmetic sequence. And we also have identified that we should be using this formula for an arithmetic series because a series is the indicated sum of the terms of a sequence. And in our given problem, we are asked to find the total number of seats 
in TICC. So let us first um, practice on using this formula. Let's have this example right here. So we have to find the sum of the first 10 terms of the sequence 3, 6, 9, and so on. So there are two things that we can do to solve this problem. We can write the first 10 terms of the sequence and then add all of them. And that will be our final answer. Or we can use the formula. So we will be able to compare if the formula will give us the correct answer. So we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27. How many terms do we have now? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Let's have another one. 30. So we now have 10 terms. So what we want to do now is to just add all of them. Let's have our calculator right here. So we have 3 plus 6 plus 9. Sorry. Plus 12 plus 15 plus 18 plus 21 plus 24 plus 27 plus 30 equals and that is our final answer 165 so the sum of the first 10 terms is 165 let us now use our formula to check if it will produce an answer of 165 so we have here s sub 10 because we are looking for the sum of the first 10 terms. So we have here 10 times the quantity of 2. A sub 1 is 3 plus the quantity of 10 minus 1 times D, which is 3, all over Since the number of terms is an even number, we can cancel this and we are left with 5 here. So that is a good thing. So we have now 5 times. We have 2 times 3, that's 6. Plus, that's 10 minus 1, 9 times 3. We have 27. So we basically have just 5 times. 6 plus 27 is 33. So 33 times 5 is 165. But let us use our calculators to, to check. So we have 5 times 33. That is 165. So S sub 10 is equal to 165. So we now have trust in this formula. So this formula is going to give us a right answer. So let us copy this formula now and paste it in our solution for our problem. So this is our formula. I'll just... There. So let us now identify first the given data. So we are just going to plug those given data. So we have S sub N, which is going to be s sub 30 because there are 30 rows in TICC as said here in example number one. So we have n which is 30 because we have 30 rows so we have 30 terms in our sequence. a sub 1 is 20 because that is the number of seats in the first row. And then we have D, which is 2, because each row after the first row is 2 more than the previous row. So now that we have our given data, let us now just plug those in our formula and solve. So we have now S sub 30 
is equal to 30 times the quantity of 2 times a sub 1 is 20 plus the quantity of 30 minus 1 times d which is 2 all over 2. Let us simplify our equation. So we'll have, um, we can cancel this since it is an even number and we are left with 15. So let us have now 15 times 2 times 20 plus 30 minus 1 is 29 times 2. Let us simplify this further. So we have now 15 times 2 times 20 is 40 plus 29 times 2 is 58 plus 40 that is 98. So we basically just have 15 times 98. Let us have our calculator and multiply 15 and 98. And we have our final answer. 1,470. So S sub 30 is equal to 1,470. Therefore, there are 1,470 seats in TICC. But what if the sequence is a geometric sequence? How do we identify the sum of its terms? Let us have our third example. So we have to find the sum of the sequence 2, 6, 18, 54, a sub n. I think let's have a sub 5. So this is the formula that we are going to use because we have a finite geometric sequence. So let us identify the given data first before we plug it in our formula. So we have S sub n is equal to S sub 5 because we are looking for the sum of the first five terms. A sub 1 is 2. R is 3. 6 divided by 2 is 3. If we take 18 and divide it by 6, we also get 3. If we take 54 and divide it by 18, we also get 3. And then n is 5. Now that we have properly listed down our given data, let us plug those in our formula. So we have s sub 5 is equal to a sub 1, 2 times 1 minus r, 3 to the n, 5, all over, sorry, all over, 1 minus r, 3. Let us simplify this further. So we have 2 times 1 minus 3 to the fifth. So we have 3 raised to the fifth power. So we have 243. So 243 all over 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. So we have here now 2 times 1 minus 243, that's negative 242 over negative 2. 2 times negative 242, that's negative 484 over negative 2. So our final answer would be 242. Well, actually, you can also just cancel this. And negative divided by negative is a positive. So that's positive 242.